Yo, we're back. Thanks for hanging out with us as always. Do me a favor, I haven't asked you about this in a long time, but if you like the content we're making here at Finnegan's Garage, hit the subscribe button for me and hit that little bell up top. That will tell you some of the times when we drop new content and that helps us out a lot here with the algorithm. This video, you're gonna love. It is about engines and drag boats and broken ones and ones that aren't broken. And uh, we're gonna talk about Side Chick, my carbon fire drag boat, what's going on with that. We're also going to do a further autopsy on that broken 632 big block Chevy that we killed at the World Finals last season. Let's go. All right, so here's what's going on. If you guys recall, or if you haven't been around very long, I bought a carbon fiber Cheyenne jet boat from a guy named Joe LeCamp. Amazing boat, sat around a little while, had problems with the boat, had problems with the wiring, had a lot of problems with the all aluminum 632 big block Chevy that was powering it. Pretty much every race we ran in 2022 and 2023, that engine broke. And uh, it broke in spectacular fashion at the world finals last year where uh, it it dropped a valve. After getting slower every pass, finally it just dropped a valve. Broken push rod, maybe bent a valve after the push rod broke, not sure. And so we decided to regroup. We took the boat home from California and the motor, decided to put the 711 out of game over my old jet boat in this boat just to see does it even fit. And it does fit, which is awesome. You know, it, it uses the same motor plates, uh, the same drive shaft. It, it's in there, right? But not nearly ready to run. This was an EFI motor with turbos. This boat had a carbureted 632 in it. We're kind of at a crossroads with this motor. We're very busy this year. We have no plans to go racing. I'd like to go to one event this year, but I gotta be honest, the boat isn't ready. And to get this motor ready in this boat is gonna take a lot. We either have to convert the entire boat to EFI, or I have to buy another tunnel ram and two dominators and a front drive distributor and convert this engine to run carbureted. And so both of those are expensive propositions, but also very time consuming because the other thing this thing needs is a set of headers built, which we're capable of doing here at Finnegan's Garage. However, time consuming. It, it takes me on average probably a week to build a complete set of headers. And um, you're talking another week or two weeks to convert this thing to EFI tunnel ram, nitrous, yada, yada, yada. It's a lot. And so Joe and I were talking about it and we realized the odds of us racing with this motor this year, pretty slim. And in the meantime, I've been talking to Pete Harrell, my buddy, and um, I've, been, I've told him what's gone on with that 632. I said, we're gonna rebuild it ourselves someday. I didn't have any plans to do it right away. And I said, Pete, I think we should switch to a different cylinder head with a better valve train system and one that would probably be more reliable. And Pete said, I can fix those heads and make them reliable. And I said, well, hell, if, if you're confident in that, Pete, it's a lot easier to rebuild that motor and put it back in this boat because the boat is completely set up for that motor. We don't have to convert it to EFI. You know, we don't have to build headers for it. We could conceivably go racing this year. And so in this video, we're taking those heads to Pete uh, we're also taking the entire motor so he can look at the whole combo because as you recall, not only did it drop a valve, but our brand new CP pistons were hitting our brand new, I think it was a Cali crankshaft. Um, so we had 
skirts of the pistons hitting the counterweights of the crank. We had valves hitting pistons. It should not be there. You should see the back side of the valve. You shouldn't be seeing the face of the valve. There's and maximum if, airflow right there. Yes. <laughs> and if you look at the guide, there's a chunk of the guide missing, right? Yeah. Well, if you come over here, this one's doing the same there's a chunk thing. of that guide missing. Oh, yeah. Yep. Valve seats junk. It's into the head. It's probably going to have to be welded, too. That's a bummer. Those are big intakes. Yeah, those look like two 450s or maybe even bigger. Gonna have to see Pete. Broken valves, you know, rocker arm stands coming loose. There were so many things wrong with that motor. And um, we're gonna have Pete look at all of it and try to come up with a plan to maybe put that motor back together and run this year. I don't know, we'll find out. But uh, right now, let's journey to Mooresville, North Carolina, home of Harrell Engine and Dyno and visit with Pete and his top secret cam guy who's probably not gonna be much of a secret after this video comes out. This 1970 Datsun 510 is one of the least trashy cars in the Finnegan fleet, which is why I'm getting rid of it. It's too nice. Well, really, I just have too many cars. And so, you guys can have a chance at putting this in your home garage, plus a bunch of other cool prizes. If you go to fsmgarage.com right now, you can find out how you could own this amazing, Piss yellow, Datsun 510. Uh, and it's got a good history. This is the car that I bought at an auction, picked up at the beach, drove to the top of the mountain, went snowboarding, broke my leg, and this car, after catching fire, still got me with my busted leg all the way home back to Georgia. And as you've seen in the episode of Finnegan's Garage, Joe and I fixed all the wiring. Everything that melted, fixed. Still has the hardware store carpet in it, still has the awesome yellow hue, Still is lowered on coilovers all the way around. Five-speed swap. Joe and I fixed the shifter. You no longer punch the dash when you shift it. It's got an L18 under the hood. This thing corners. This thing hauls butt for what it is. It's a lot of fun to drive, and I think you guys are going to love it. Now, when you're at FSMGarage.com right now, you don't got to buy anything to enter to try to win this thing. But if you do buy a sticker pack, that'll get you one entry. If you buy a shirt or a hat, that'll get you three entries. If you feel like being extra sweaty this summer and buying a hoodie, that's six entries at a shot at taking this home. You could also maybe win two different wire care wiring kits to get your you know, hot rod, muscle car, boat, whatever you've got, rickshaw, connected and ready to be electric. You could also win some autograph FSM merch, like FSM hats like this one. FSMgarage.com is where you wanna go for a chance at any of those things. Thank you and on with the show. If our clearances are okay when we check this, the, the PV, how do we determine if we're why it's floating a valve, if it's floating the valves, or if we're getting the coil bind? Yeah, well, we'll just take a look at all that. We'll see what our actual lift is um, and compare that to the spring setup and see what our open and closed pressures are, how far away from coal band, coal bind we are, at least in theory. Okay. Uh, and then kind of look at the di different options that can be causing the problem. <clears throat> but I guess we're mocking this up right now just to confirm that we don't have a, a built-in interference problem, right. you know, and then we'll check some other kind of more theoretical stuff <laughs> and, okay. and see if that's, that's the problem the biggest thing we want to check, we, we're going to check at some point, is the camshaft profile itself, just to see if it's, who knows, it could be something really radical that's getting us into problems that we don't need, you know. Okay. All right. Well, let's get into looking at uh, yeah, we'll make, issues land. Right, we'll get our, see what kind of clearance we got to start with, and then and go from there. All right, so... We can either change the adjuster and use that rocker, or we can just grind on this one a little bit. So, this rocker came off of cylinder three, and as you can see, it touches the stand on here. This one, you can see, has been ground down to clearance it. So, there's issue number one. So, I say, might as well grind that one down. And it's I mean, going to have to get ground. This somewhere. one's probably going to have to get replaced anyways. It's pretty beat. This one actually looks like 
it actually still hit, even though it was ground, it looked like it was still hitting. Right, something's going on there, huh? Yeah. All right, well, let me see. Yeah, it's still hitting. Looks good. -er. Looks good. -er. So far. Yeah, it's on the back side of the. Looks like it's on the back side of the load, too. The intake wasn't hitting. Just exhaust, is that right? I believe so. <clears throat> All right. So with the double check and look at one of the pistons, you can see it on the pistons, I think. Mm -hmm. You can see the valve spinning mm -hmm. on here. This side looks good. Like yep. okay. We're going to measure net lift and uh, also at some point we're going to measure our clearance. Start off with, let's just measure and see how far this valve is moving. There's 100. 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 95. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's a lot of lifts. Um, now, we kind of need to find our point where we're tightest, piston to valve wise. Yeah, because it looks like the valve moved and the piston didn't. One, 45 still. Let me get my other little short ratchet. One fifty. Looks like the closest I'm getting is like one forty five. Okay. Which should be miles, you know. <clears throat> yeah, well, why is it kissing the piston? Well, that's you know, basically what I said before. Like this it's weird for this thing to be doing that, you know? Right. Um But that goes into maybe that's not our problem. You know, maybe the problem is camshaft profile, spring, something in that department, you know. Okay. <clears throat> Which, you know, I could say with these things, that, that's usually, it's weird for it to have physical. That much. You know what I mean? Like, right. But, but I mean, on, on every piston, it's evident that the exhausts are, are touching the pistons mm -hmm. all right so what I normally let's call that 145 uh -huh. right now what I normally do at this point also is I will check it with clay as well right because okay. um, the clay is going to tell us radial right. you know what I mean uh, as well as depth you know okay. and give us a little better picture so let's pull the head back off real quick okay. and uh, switch Switch styles here. <laughs> all right, so we're all mopped back up. We're using the clay method now. I'm gonna just make one revolution and then we're gonna pull it back apart and see what we got. Okay. Stick to it. Just a little bit and then let go. Alright, so that's that's that. Let's uh, rip it 
break down. Down it all apart real quick. That looks like I would expect it to. So the big question is, is why is right. So now um, that that tells us that basically we don't have a a built-in physical interference issue. We should have plenty of room. We can cut that measurement, but measure it. But I bet it's similar to what we measure with the indicator. Okay. There aren't any radial issues really. Um, so now the next thing we'll do is check the spring situation, see where we're at with that, and then. After that, it'll be to camshaft. Physically, we have plenty of clearance. But as you can see, you can see the circles on the pistons that they're kissing the, the, the valves are kissing the pistons. So, why? Questions, why, why, why? That says 181. Down here probably a little less. But it confirms we got miles. Yeah. You know, when we measure with the indicator, it was 145 at some point, somewhere right. in there, you know, but that's why I always do it. A lot of times I do it both ways so that I can get a visual res representation, but um, kind of kind of checks two different ways as well. All right. now, well, it's not a physical thing. Yeah, it's not physically interfering. Okay, so this one's set up at, at 2115. My teardown guy says these were kind of all over the place. They were anywhere from 2060 to 2030, right? Okay. So um, for the purposes of checking, we might just set the height mic at like 2100 and see where they're at. But, because there's a, there was just a pile of shims under these things and kind of all over the place. I've got that at 2100. And let's just take a spring out there and see what that gets us. Here on our fancy spring gauge. All right, now let's check, see what our seat pressure is at 2100. All right, we're about 340 on the seat. Okay. All right, now I want to go to Max lift. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninety-five. We're at about nine seventy on the nose. And it looks like we got plenty of room. We're not coal binding here. Sometimes I'll take the spring apart and just check it independently so I can see the inner springs better, but it looks okay. Um, you notice you have to be in peak physical condition to perform tests like this. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of pressure to squeeze out on there. Right. <clears throat> um, Especially when you get down to this lower part. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot of cranking. Um, so anyhow, that's could be a little light on the seat depending on how the the camshaft is. So I guess the next thing we need to do is take these numbers, write them all down, and then we'll cam doctor this cam and see what the profile actually looks like okay. and what it is, because I guess it's kind of a mystery cam anyhow, yeah. sort of, and uh, confirm what it is at least, and then see if these springs are up to the task or not, and if, the, okay. if there maybe is problems just in the camshaft profile in general, you know. All right, guys, we are at a Kind of a secret location here. Pete doesn't want to divulge this location, but behind him you can see what's called a cam doctor. And we're here to figure out what's going on, the actual real specs on this cam, because we don't really have a true cam card on it. We never really got one. Um, the cam was originally 
a bullet cam, which we have a cam card for, but it got sent back to Iski for a regrind and we never got a card with it. So we'll find out on that. Um, what are we hoping to find here, Pete? Well, we're hoping to find um, that this is the source of all of our problems. Um, and, we, and, and we've definitely found some issues with the way these lobes are. So one thing we noticed that he looked at was the cam wear looks like the lifter's jumping at the tops here. The wear's not even across the tops of them. So in a minute, this little machine will tell us everything we need to know about this cam. What rocker ratio? Uh, 1.8 on the intake, 1.75 on the exhaust, if I remember right. What's the lash supposed to be? We don't know. Okay. Yes. Yes. I can actually text him to find out. Yeah. Okay, you said the intakes are, the, no, the exhausts are causing the problem, right? Yes, the yes. exhaust is the problem. All right. Let me look and see. It's checking. So it says 17 to 25 on this card. So that's, the, that's the bullet. That's the bullet card. Brian, yeah. Oh, we don't have yeah. any So. It's 284, 306. 285, 306 at 50. 522 intake, low 506 exhaust. So I'm just get rid of the intakes, look at the exhaust, find out what it is. It's got what looks pretty much like a constant velocity ramp here on the exhaust. Um, but it's only about 11,000, so you wouldn't want to put it over 17 or 18 thousandths hot. What would happen if you did? Well, let's you just look at the like the velocity at that point is eight tenths, uh, you know, zero 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 eight, so eight tenths. If you went up, um, for the lash is twenty two, your velocities. 150 percent you know what that was it's over a thousandths and if you go up a couple more to, now your velocity is at double what it was down at the, at the lash ramp so he just sent me the bullet card for lash which is probably what he's been going so off been he said it around cold he thinks it's like Five thousands. Cold. Five thousand. Five thousands on an aluminum head iron block. So if he's setting at five thousands cold, that is going to be about twenty six thousandths hot. So twenty six thousandths hot divided by a one point seven five rocker. Put you at almost fifteen thousandths lobe uh, lobe lift at that at the lash point. So what you're looking at when there's when you're on the lash when before you take the lash out there's no pressure on the valve the valve's you know the valve's moving not at all and at that lash point whatever that velocity is you know at the at that last lash point is what that valve is going to feel. Okay. So if it's moving, the faster it's moving, the harder it's going to hit at that point. And it's same on the closing side. It's going to hit the seat and make it bounce off the seat. And so, at, so that's 15 thousandths, well, 15 thousandths, yeah. velocity is 0 0.001177. And that is ridiculously high to be closing the valve at that point. Uh, to bring up, I'll bring up a drag rate, a lobe of mine that's similar so you can see. 
So did you say on that it's 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 hard for that to close at that rate? What it's doing is coming down, so it's it's, it's dropping it's the valve. It's dropping the valve so fast that it doesn't it and it's you're trying to slow the valve down before it gets to the seat. So uh -huh. you want to set the valve gently yeah. on the seat. Yeah, you right. so you I mean this let me close mine out here this for a second. This is this is the velocity curve here. Right. So it's slowing down as it gets to there. That green line uh -huh. is where it hits, okay. the, where the valve hits the seat. It should be down here. Okay. See how this is nice and slow here? Right. It needs to be down here. And be it, and that's it's probably not Isky's fault. If their card probably had, well, if they sent the card, it probably had the tighter lash, but you really can't go much tighter. With all aluminum motor, you, you can't run a, a real tight lash lobe cam because the zero growth is zero. High, yeah the growth is higher than right. the lash. So basically, Pete, for what I'm getting is where the ramp, what you want to call it, is too much too on aggressive. open and close. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's trying to open the valve too quick, and it basically drops the valve when we're going. And it's making the valve bounce or right can make it bounce. It's bouncing a lot if it's bouncing more than 145,000. Right, yeah. Definitely looks a lot better now. <laughs> looks new. Yeah. Okay. Mine's a constant velocity. This is right here. This is like under a thousandth, a thousandth of a. So this this is just a uh, getting from the circle to start the thing, and this is just a constant velocity, and then and then accelerating. And that should show up when we do that. You can see it's flat. Uh -huh. That's the accelerator. So I'm taking the lash out, taking the lash out until we get to right there, and then I accelerate, accelerate at it. the lash point. You can see there, and now it's taking off. And then, then the acceleration, it, it, then it's actually faster than their cam accelerator. Okay. But I've already taken everything out and started the valve moving. So we're not just yeah, you're not like hitting, hitting it with a hammer and going at it. Which will calm down all the valve treating. Yeah, that's okay. Like you get everything moving first, and then you can. I mean, mine will have a faster acceleration, but I'm already moving everything in the right direction first before I accelerate. That. Right. So they're doing it, just hitting the damn thing, and that the shock is. It's worse. You know, it it wants to flex the push rod. It wants to flex the rocker. It's hard on everything, and it probably flexes the cam also, hitting it that hard. And now it's been reground so that hopefully those problems are alleviated. Okay. Um, basically, things are a little bit too excited in here, especially on the ramps, which are the parts of the cam uh, the profile that, that takes up the slack, takes up your lash, and puts the lifter on the lobe. Um, that was way too aggressive and conceivably could have been the source of some of our issues. Just like, oh, from you looking at it, it looks like you're hitting that thing with a hammer and just Right, you're trying to just slam the valve open and just drop it on the other side. And that's right. never good. That causes all kinds of problems. How? Oh. All right. Yeah, so although it, it's just crazy how like this cam looks basically identical to how it did two hours ago. Right. And there's probably been a couple grams of steel removed from it. Now it's actually quite it's, a bit different. Yeah, and it's completely different. Yeah. The, the ramp and everything has changed. And right. It just shows that in everything some, should be a lot smoother. Right. It's a lot less harsh you, on all the valve chain. In some parts of your motor, tiny amounts of metal actually have big effects on the yeah. performance. Maybe we can kind of show them what we had and what we have now. 
and what was kind of going on with this. Because it was hard. I know it's kind of hard to read it on his little monitor there. Yeah. So so basically, if your if your lobe if your base circles here, and you kind of gradually take up slack until you start to open the valve. Right. The first part here is called your ramp, right? And that's what puts the lifter on the lobe. Um, it takes up your the slack in your, takes in your up lash. The, it takes up our lash. And the way we were before, our, let's say our lash point is like right here. Yeah. Right? So this is basically doesn't exist because it, it never is touched, right? Our, our, I mean, basically when we were coming to take up that lash, it was going like this and then turning up. Yeah, so we were just, when the, when the lifters forced onto the lobe, it's on the, uh, it's on, right on the profile, and it's just jamming the valve open. And on the other side, same thing. It's coming down. We're and coming just down, slamming it shut. And instead of s sh slowly putting it back on the, the valve back on the seat, we're just dropping it right there, right. Yeah. <clears throat> so now that's all been rearranged. And like I say, if you were to watch the, the actual grinding process, there's hardly any material that's ground off. It's yeah, we literally, I think he said we took maybe a 10 thou lift out of it, maybe 20 on exhaust. 10 right. thousand, I didn't take 20 on exhaust. Right. And, but uh, we've changed the whole ramp of this right. and, and given the, it a nice smooth entry. Right. On the ramps, which should, which is, if you're looking at it, the ramps are right here and here. Right. Like that metal, the amount of metal taken off there to change that is just a few thousands with that. I yeah. don't even know what it is. It's hardly anything. Right. But you can see it when it's being ground like it's touched before the rest of it is. Right. <clears throat> and it's good. We had some we had some pretty gnarly wear on some of these lobes too. So. Right. And we also, we know what the cam is now. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a good thing too. Right. Yeah, we know exactly what it is. It may not be perfect, but it'd be a pretty good start. And uh, hopefully it'll get things under control. So we know we have plenty of piston to valve clearance. We know we now have a properly working cam, hopefully. And hopefully all our valve chain issues go away. No more broken springs, no more broken push rods, no more broken rocker arms, uh, no more pistons kissing the valves. Right, yeah. <clears throat> That's most important. Right, and it can also really help power too. Yeah. Because if those valves are bouncing out here, then uh, that's just, uh, well, yeah, I mean, even on the exhaust side, when it comes down, if this valve is bouncing, if it's, it's bouncing, not staying closed. Your, your cylinder pressure is, power. that's right, your cylinder right. pressure goes to, goes to crap. So this will help that as well. Okay. So our plan is uh, get this back in. I think we were what, gonna coat pistons. Yeah, we're gonna coat pistons, check everything out. Uh huh. Hone, we might look at the deck. It is deck a little, surface. little rough, we might, might slick that up a little bit okay and just check everything out you know and then go back okay. together obviously we've got we've definitely got some repairs on the heads we got to do drop yes. the valve beat up one seat we got a little bit of welding to do not much um put a couple new seats in and a bunch of new guides and then the heads will be you know back where they need to be and maybe a different spring yeah we'll probably change the spring just a little bit because it that a little less pressure is that probably a little saying? less pressure. Yeah, over the nose, it's got a little more than it really needs, you know. But we'll look at that, you know. And uh, pretty... is that what was causing it to kind of float over the top of the lobe? Well, it can. Or is that the is it was that the ramp just making it bounce up and over? Well, both. But if a lot of if you have a lot a lot of spring pressure, and let's say your push rod situation is not up to par, right? As you're Coming up this ramp here, you're screaming up here. What happens is the push rod will deflect a little bit, right? Uh -huh. And then essentially the push rod becomes a spring, right? And then when you when you crest the the uh, peak lift here, instead of riding back down, it the spring or this stored energy is returned into the valve and it keeps it it'll loft it over. Got it. Instead of coming back down right. the other side, right? right. So. You want, you want that's, this is why you want your valve train, push rod in particular, and your rockers and everything to be as absolutely stiff as possible. 
so that right. they don't store energy where they're not supposed to. And that was one thing we talked about too when we were over there re to go on the cam doctor was this was turning into a spring. This was turning into a spring. Those will turn into a spring. I mean, everything's just making everything bounce around so much more. So I'm excited. Yeah. I want to put this boat back in the water. Right. Yeah. Well, boats are weird and, you know, pick up just a few hundred RPM and it's way faster, you know, yeah. and hopefully that's the, hopefully that's the situation we'll be in here for a while. Well, uh, as you guys saw, I wasn't there. I was actually filming a roadkill episode in Utah, which was super fun while the guys were autopsying the motor. And a lot of what you and I believed was wrong with it, Pete confirmed, which was cool. Apparently the pistons are gonna be okay, which is huge because it takes a long time to get pistons. It doesn't matter who they're coming from or who you are, it takes a long time to get pistons. And so um, Pete's gonna coat the pistons, which will enable him to then rehone our sleeves and get the piston to wall clearance he wants and the finish of the sleeves that he wants. And then Cam's been reground, probably reusing most of the push rods. Um, you know what? No, we're going to replace those because we already we already had one break. We're going to replace the push rods. We're going to replace the rocker arms because all of them are dented from various points in their lifespan. Before I owned them and where I owned them, where the valve train fell apart and they popped off and the push rods dented them. So replace the rocker arms, replace the push rods. We're going to replace the valve springs. Our crank rods and pistons are going to get reused, but the pistons are going to get coated and we're going to clearance the skirts on the pistons so they no longer hit the crank. Deck the block. We're for sure decking the block because the surface of that block is so rough for an MLS gasket. Um, and when you deck the block, we're gonna lose piston the valve clearance, but we have plenty. Yeah. So if you deck the block five thou, that's fine because we're, we're gonna have control of the it's valve. It's still gonna leave us roughly 140 thousandths, maybe more right. piston the valve clearance, so we'll be good. Yeah, so with all of that being done, that motor goes right in this boat with the existing headers, the existing fuel system, the existing ignition, we could go and race. Nitrous. And nitrous. And we're back on the water having fun. We could be back on the water having fun sooner rather than later. Um, and then, I don't know, maybe later, EFI nitrous in this boat. But uh, I, I'd rather go racing now. Yeah. So that's it for this episode of Finnegan's Garage. Thank you guys for hanging out, especially those of you that went to fsmgarage.com and bought the merch, because as always, you make a piss poor decision with your money and your uh, apparel. That just helps us keep working on all these things. And don't forget, you could own my Datsun 510, that beautiful yellow 1970 lowered five-speed swapped L18 swap 510 that he and I went snowboarding with. Uh, that could be yours. You'll find out how at fsmgarage.com right now.